Today I'm going to show you how to make a life-size Bigfoot that measures 8 feet tall. Today's tutorial will show you a step-by-step -step instructions guide on how to make your own Bigfoot. So join me for this awesome tutorial. To begin building our Bigfoot, we need PVC. We're going to be using one and a half inch PVC for the entire project. So to begin, we're going to do the upper and lower legs. Each one will be 21 inches long, just like this. So we need the knee and it's going to be a 45 degree connector, just like this, just like that. And then for the hip joint, we need a 90 degree connector, just like this. Then, for the actual connector of the hip and the spine, we're going to be using two separate pieces. Each of these PVC pieces are five and a half inches long. I'll put them like this. And we need a T connector right here. This is where the spine is going to go. We'll lift this up just like that and we'll insert it like this. So far we have one leg. Let's keep going. As you can see, I already have this leg assembled, but it's the exact same way that I did the first one. The first piece is 21 inches. The second piece is 21 inches. We have a 45 degree connector. And on the bottom, we have another 45 degree connector because this leg is gonna go like that. On the top right over here, we have a 90 degree connector. Insert it like this. All of them are like that. Ensure that this one right here is facing down. And then, Connect it. So as you can see, he has this kind of rush walking stance that we got going over here. You can change the stance if you want by just bringing the legs up or changing the um, desired connectors over here. But this is what I think is gonna look good and I think we're good. So as you can see, I haven't used any PVC glue. I will eventually glue all the pieces together, but I just wanna show y'all how I'm doing it and how easy it is. That didn't take no time at all, and we already have the bottom portion done. So now what I wanna do is connect the feet to a platform. We can use plywood, we can use a two by eight or a two by six. I love using plywood when I have these tall creatures. So we have a piece of plywood, I believe it's three quarters of an inch thick. We're gonna put it down and then we're going to attach the adapter pieces to the leg. Those are pretty cool, so let me show you what that is. Before we continue with this tutorial, I wanted to show you all the first book that I've written. It's called Little Olive and the Wally Bat, and it's rated for kids ages two to six years old. It follows a brave little olive that gets lost and is found by a very helpful brown bat. This is the first book I've ever written and I'm super excited about it. It's available on Amazon via paperback or Kindle. So if anyone wants to support me or read it to their kiddos, go check it out. The link is in the bio of the video, Little Olive and the Wally Bat on Amazon. Now let's get back to this amazing tutorial. So here I have my piece of plywood. I cut a nice big chunk. And here is the adapters I was talking about. This is an adapter that's available on Lowe's. And this one right here is a flange. It's available on Amazon is where I got this. And this is one and a half inches. And it'll be perfect. You just screw it in. And this is gonna go right there. And the other one is gonna go back there. So we just have to screw it into the wood and this one will pop right inside of this adapter. This one won't pop right in because it's a six, or I'm sorry, a 45 degree uh, connector. So we just need to cut a small piece of our regular PVC to insert it into the bottom right there so that we can insert it into this one. So let's get to it. And that's how we screw in the flange and attach the top. Super simple, we're gonna do the same thing to the other one. And for the back leg, we have a two inch piece that we've cut. We're just gonna go like that, and then it's gonna go attached into there once we put it into the, into the wood. 
So remember to put in the first leg first into the adapter right there so that you know exactly where the back leg has to move to. So as you can see, right here looks about right. So if you want, you can just mark it like that so you know exactly where it's gonna go. So I changed something up with the floor base. I put this one by six wood over here just so that the screws wouldn't go all the way through because even though I was using a, an inch and a quarter screws, it was still going through the wood. So by putting that up there, the screws can go through the wood without going on the bottom. So we're good to go. We're gonna continue upwards. Let's do it. Next, we have to do the spine. The spine is 37 inches tall. So we grab this one right here. For the shoulders, these are nine inches. These are for the shoulders. You need two of these. And this one right here is our 90 degree angle. We do it like this. We have this cool one right here that has four sides. And just like that. The same thing with the other ones, nine inches and a 90 degree angle, and just like that. And what I love about uh, this is that you can just turn it whichever way you want. So if you want the arm to go like this or to go like this, you just turn this like that. So this goes up here. And now we have the spine and the shoulders. So we're doing good. It's pretty tall now, so let's see how it's gonna end up. So before we continue going higher with this spine and shoulders, let's use this fusion cement. It's a PVC cement. And we're gonna apply it all inside of the joint areas so it can solidify. Remember, the bottom half is just gonna be one solid piece, as will the top half. But we're not going to put glue right in here because if you wanna store, you're going to wanna detach it from right over here. So no PVC glue right here in the spine area. Everywhere else, let's do it. So very important, while you're doing the gluing with the PVC cement, you need to be careful that you don't glue it in an angle or position that isn't gonna work for you. It's very important that you make sure the pipe's gonna go for the hip, is facing straight up. You need to make sure that the legs align, and that's why I like that I put them on little pieces of wood. So if it needs to move forward or backwards, I can just unscrew the wood and move it. One last thing, with the right leg of Bigfoot, it's this one right over here, Initially, I said you needed 21 inches for the upper leg, and that turned out to be wrong because of the angle of the back. Instead, you need a 25 inches for the upper right leg of Bigfoot, and then 21 inches, 21 inches, and then 21 inches. Got it? We're good. So just remember, we want our Bigfoot to be leaning forward. So make sure that the hip piece right there is angled in a forward motion so that the spine curves forward like that but let's keep going. For the arms, it's super easy. We have a 90 degree angle. We have a 25 inch PVC pipe. Then we have our 45 degree angle. And last but not least, we have 25 inch lower arm. So the arms are all 25 inches. Upper arm 25, lower arm 25, the same for the opposite side. So once you stick it like this, we haven't put any glue on it, this is where you wanna make sure that you align the arm properly. This arm, I want it to be forward like that, while the arm in the back, we're going to do it just like this, but we want this arm to be further back like that, so that it looks like he's walking. So let's start gluing everything together. Let's start with the lower pieces before getting all the way to the top over here. So now that we have his frame up like this, we need to start giving his body more meat to it. So I have pieces of styrofoam that I've saved over the projects I've done. And what we're gonna do is apply the styrofoam on the legs, on the lower legs, to give him that big meatiness to him. I'm going to be using duct tape right here to attach everything. I also have a lot of plastic bags that I've saved that I'm going to use it also as filler. So this way we can get a nice thick meat going on him. Another thing you could definitely use is chicken wire. You could grab chicken wire and wrap it around. Um, I was originally gonna use that, but I have a lot of styrofoam pieces left, so I'm gonna go with that first. But definitely for the upper body, I'm gonna use probably chicken wire for his rib cage area, and we'll go from there. So let's get started.
As you can see, we have the chicken wire all along the center with a piece of styrofoam up there. Easy and simple. Look where we're at. We're at this point. We've put our chicken wire, our styrofoam, is duct tape. We haven't done the arms yet because we want to focus from the bottom to the top. I have this amazing fur fabric. It is from Amazon. They sell it by the yard. So we're going to wrap our entire Bigfoot with this. So in order to do it like this, we're going to do it like this. We want to make sure that it adheres to the styrofoam or whatever material you're using. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get expanding foam. I'm going to put expanding foam all in the middle, all between this right here on the exposed PVC. And we're going to start doing this, wrapping it around. Expanding foam is a great adhesive. So once we put it around and we like how it looks, I'm going to get some twine or some rope and I'm just going to tie it up, tie it up, tie it up and then wait for it to dry. With expanding foam, it should be about two hours, maybe three before it's tack free. So just a couple of hours and we'll be good to go to take off the rope. But yeah, we're gonna do super good with this. I'm super excited. Let's get started. So what we wanna do is also put expanding foam all along these flat surfaces. The issue is if you put expanding foam here, it'll probably start dripping down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some painter's tape or if you have some packaging tape, we'll put a little bit of tape here to create like a shelf for the expanding foam to rest. So when we wrap this up, it'll adhere very nicely. So just hold it a little bit better so it doesn't start dripping down. Once we've put on all the expanding foam, it looks messy, but it's perfectly fine. Carefully, we're going to get this and we're going to wrap it just like so. There we go. Just like so. Just want to be careful. You don't want to touch the expanding foam with your bare hand. So you might want to wear some gloves. And then I'm gonna get my rope really quickly. And just like this, I'm gonna tie it up just like that. And then we're just going to do the same thing. Make sure we put it nice and taut against the body. Just like so. And we keep on tying it up with some rope. Make sure that all the parts touch the adhesive, the expanding foam. And as you can see, we have the first leg wrapped. Now before the expanding foam dries, you definitely want to adjust anything that you need to adjust. If you wanted to pull this out like this or tighten something else up, right now is the time. We don't have a lot of time because the expanding foam is starting to get tacky. So you want to make sure that any moves that you want to do, you do them right now. So before we move on to the chest, as you can see, I filled it in with styrofoam pieces. I'm doing this because I'm gonna fill the chest cavity with expanding foam. I just want everything to be solidified and a solid chest piece and torso. So if you don't have styrofoam, you can also use trash bags or paper bags, stuff them in there and then fill it in with expanding foam. That way when it hardens, you have a nice solid piece for the center and it'll just be much better for the stability of your Bigfoot. So let's start doing that. As you can see, we put the chicken wire. Let's start filling it in with some expanding foam. So 
So quickly, this is the right arm. As you can see, we have two styrofoam pieces, but in order to fill in the joint, I'm simply using masking tape to make some temporary walls. As you can see, we're gonna fill in that area with expanding foam. And once it dries, we take off the masking tape and that's how we connect both joints. As you can see, the torso looks completely different than when we started. We filled it in with expanding foam. Now, in order to save on cans, we filled it in with styrofoam, but you could have used cardboard boxes, you could have used plastic bags, paper bags, whatever it is to fill it in so that the expanding foam could grab onto something. And of course, we used our chicken wire, and that was a really good cage to hold everything in. Now that it's filled in with expanding foam, it is sturdy yet lightweight. It'll be perfect for wrapping it with our fabric fur. I love this method because it'll be out in the rain, it won't disintegrate, it won't get soft, it'll just be perfect like that. So let's wrap it with the final, with the final fabric that we have to put on this. I realized too late that I wasn't filming this part here where I showed you how I assembled the head. So I'm just gonna walk you through it. It's very simple. The head is from Amazon and underneath the head is a styrofoam head that costs about eight to $10 also on Amazon. The styrofoam head that I bought, as you can see it's under here, has a hole in it where you can put a half inch PVC pipe, just like that, just so it can go on top of Bigfoot. But in order to make the head bigger so that it's proportional to Bigfoot, I put expanding foam all along the sides, as you can see over here, expanding foam, expanding foam, just to give it more girth to it. So now the head is bigger and more proportional. Then I put this rug on top of it and glued it with expanding foam, super simple as well. There's just expanding foam all over the place. Make sure you leave enough hanging so it can drape the shoulders and then you can trim off the excess pieces. But this is super simple. The mask doesn't come with all of these dark features on it. I just grabbed a little brush, grabbed some acrylic paint and did some fine details on it. I'm gonna probably paint this inside black or I might leave it white. I think I'm just gonna paint it black in there so it can have like deep sunken eyes. But this is super simple. This part was really the easiest part. I just wasn't filming when I was doing this. So let's go put Bigfoot's head on top. One of the last things we did is grab our fake feet, which are just like this, and we simply put them underneath there like that. I'm not actually going to attach them so it's easy to store them. Or you can use a little bit of expanding foam beneath them just to hold them in place like that. But just like that, we got the feet down. Lastly, I'm not doing anything for the hands. I simply allowed the fur fabric to come together like this. So it seems like his hands are just really hairy and ominous.